So recently I had a request on YouTube from Joyster75 about setting up a scene in Element 3D with a character uh, and make it look like the kind of Pixar cartoon style plasticky toy look. Well, Joyster75, as Wesley said to Buttercup in The Princess Bride, as you wish. <laughs> So here we are inside of After Effects, and this is the final version of what I'm going to show you how to do. Now, I pulled a reference from the Googles of some poster artwork from Toy Story 4 to give me a reference of the very smooth, plasticky material that we're going to be creating. And it's actually pretty simple to create in Element 3D. So this character that I have here is a character that I got from Daz uh, 3D, Daz Studio. Uh, and because of the licensing restrictions of purchasing this model, I can't provide the project as a free download for you to follow along. But you can go to daz3d.com and download Daz Studio for free. It's a free application. Uh, and it comes with um, some models and some characters that you could use in your projects. So if we open up Daz Studio, I have this character from the Toon Generations 2 model pack, and uh, you can get that model pack at the Daz 3D store. And then I went ahead and added some clothing to the character, which you can also find in the Daz 3D store. And then I went ahead and added a pose to the character. And once I got the character the way that I wanted it to look, I exported it as an OBJ file. Uh, after you name the file that you're saving, you'll get a pop-up menu that gives you a bunch of options for you to export. And I'm pr I pretty much left this at its default settings, but a few of the items that you definitely want to make sure are checked uh, are these little checkboxes right here, right surfaces and right material library. Uh, and you also want to make sure that the collect maps dial is selected and these will ensure that an mtl file will be created uh with all of the texture maps for this character and they'll be collected uh which and then you'll be able to import uh them with the model when you import the model inside of Ele element 3d so back in after effects uh we let's create a new scene and give it a name um we'll add a new solid and call this e3d and then we'll add element. And if you see this little interface here, this is FX console, which is uh, free and you can get it over at videocopilot.net. Uh, and because I'm a keystroke fanatic, I absolutely love, love, love this little plugin. So it allows me to hit uh, you know, a predefined keystroke to be able to pull up and dial in, uh, or I should say, type in whatever effect I wanna be able to use. So we'll go to the element interface and click scene setup. And once in the element interface, we'll go up to the top left and click import and then navigate to where you have the OBJ file saved and either double click or click the import 3D object button right here. Uh, and you'll be prompted with a dialog box with load material options. Remember when we exported the OBJ uh, out of Daz Studio and I mentioned that you should make sure to write the material library file? Well, this is the reason. Element will automatically look for that MTL file uh, at the same base level as your OBJ file. And the MTL file has all of the texture map information stored. Uh, so it will also load all of the texture maps uh, that were exported and collected as long as they're in the base level of where you stored your OBJ file. So make sure load material as well as all the other checkboxes under it are checked. And then you can leave all the other checkboxes under the model uh, section alone and leave them at the default settings. You could change force alignment to bottom instead of model center, and it will import the character with the anchor point at the bottom of the 3D model and position it at the world center of Element's 3D space. Uh, but you can also change this anchor point in Element once you've imported the model. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it uh, at the default setting and click OK. So now that the model is imported, we can turn some of the geometry off because we don't need it. So if we zoom into the face, uh, we can see right away that the eyes look really weird and creepy. And that's because some of the textures uh, on the geometry had internal opacity settings applied to them in Daz Studio, and they're not necessary for what we want here in Element. So we can just turn them off altogether. 
so we can twirl down the disclosure triangle of the model to reveal all the different pieces of geometry. And something to keep in mind as well, um, so my character may differ from your character, um, so not all of this will be exactly the same. Also, if the scene panel in your scene looks different than mine, it may be because your view setting is set to mesh view instead of material view. And you can change that at the bottom of the scene panel uh, with these buttons right here. So you can see at the top that the first piece of geometry is the eyelashes, and we can just turn that off by unchecking the box. And while we're focused on the eyeballs, we can also turn off the cornea and the eye moisture and the eye socket. Since your character is covered with clothes, we can also turn off the fingernails, the toenails, uh, legs, and arms. And uh, for this character, we need to leave the torso on because it also has some of the neck geometry, which we do need. So if we go to the bottom of the preview panel and make the environment visible by checking this box, we can now see uh, the environment. And I went ahead and changed this from the default environment to something a little bit more outdoorsy. Uh, and if you click on the preset panel and navigate to the basic 2K uh, under the environment category, uh, I changed it to basic 2K12. Uh, I'm pretty sure that these environments come standard with Element 3D. So you should have them. So if you remember from Dad's studio, the character had brown hair instead of blonde. Well, again, these were settings inside of Dad's studio that didn't translate because the actual texture of the hair is blonde. Uh, and we can change those settings, but I'm going to leave them blonde for now. Before I move on to adjust the skin texture, I'm going to apply the boot, glove, and suit materials that I created and saved from a previous version that I did when I was initially creating this tutorial, uh, just to speed up the process and focus on the skin texture. So this particular model came with a diffuse texture map for the face. And as you can see, uh, that's been put into the diffuse texture slot here in Element. So this model also came with a specular map, but I'm not going to use it because specular or reflectivity maps aren't really necessary for physically based uh, render engines because in real life everything our eyes see is basically a reflection and all surfaces have reflectivity to one degree or another and the other reason I'm not going to use it is whatever model you may be using may not have a reflectivity or a specular map so it's best to just use the glossiness and reflectivity parameters inside of element. So for this model, the textures came in with the glossiness and the reflectivity set to zero, but typically the default parameter of the glossiness setting in Element 3D is 100%. So we'll turn it all the way up. And as you can see right away, even with reflectivity set to zero, there's still some reflection. And when we turn up the intensity of the reflectivity, the face starts to look like the T-1000 in Terminator. So uh, when we go up to the glossiness parameter and start turning that down a little bit, we can see that the reflection starts to get blurry. So getting the right cartoony look that we're after is going to be a balancing act between these two parameters. So when I was preparing this tutorial, I found that the parameters of 45% in the glossiness channel and 25% intensity in the reflectivity channel gave me the results that I wanted. And you can add subsurface scattering to this if you want, but I think overall it's probably a render hit that you may not need to have. It does add a level of realism that wouldn't be there if it was off but it just might not be that noticeable. And that's something that you should consider if you had deadlines to meet for your project. The other thing to consider, currently it's difficult to see subsurface scattering in, element th in the Element 3D interface, and you have to exit out of the interface back into the After Effects comp to be able to see any changes that you make. Another thing to keep in mind, unless the material that you're creating or adjusting can be applied universally to all of the skin, you're most likely going to be in a situation like this, where you'll have separate textures for the face and torso, which includes the neck. And in this example, the face, lips, ears, and eye socket 
all have the same texture. So it stands to reason you can apply this uh, one material to the respective geometry that it's associated with. But as a matter of proper organization, it's probably better to duplicate the face material and rename it before placing it onto its respective geometry. So for this, I wrote down the necessary uh, parameters and then updated for each of the necessary materials. For subsurface scattering, I clicked enable and I changed it to a color that I found appropriate for my character. Uh, so the hexadecimal value is E39D6E. And I left the intensity, scattering, and absorption fall off and light penetration at their default values. And I only changed the absorption range from zero to 0.55. Now, once you click on OK and exit out of the element interface and you go back into the After Effects comp, you're still probably not going to see any changes. And that's because subsurface scattering is dependent on light in the scene. And right now we have no lights in the scene. So before I add lights, I'm going to go back into element and disable the subsurface scattering. And while I'm here, I'm going to add a floor for a character to stand on. And this is really only necessary uh, so that I can see the shadows uh, of the lights so I know where I'm going to be placing the lights. As you can see, when I added the plane that's going to act as my floor uh, or shadow catcher, it adds the plane at the center of the world coordinates of the scene. And you can do one of two things in this situation. You can either manually move the floor to below your character, or you can just change the anchor point uh, or alignment of the model from model center to bottom. And this will raise your character to be on top of the floor. And it doesn't really matter in this case because we're merely using the floor as a reference to see where the lights will be casting shadow. So we'll position the floor accordingly and then exit out of the element interface and add a camera to the scene and zoom in a little closer to our character. And before I add the lights, I'm going to create a background um, by adding a solid. And to that solid, I'm going to add a gradient using one of uh, my most used and most favorite plugins, which is Boris FX Sapphire Radial Gradient. Uh, and I'll change the inner color to a lighter blue and then the outer color to a darker blue. So next I'm gonna add the lights and I'm gonna cheat a little and I'm gonna copy the lights over from the project that I created previously. So before I turn on all the lights, I wanna make sure that I have shadows enabled in the element render settings. And I'll make sure this is set to ray trace shadows, which will give me more realistic shading, but it will also be a greater render hit. With all of the lights off in the scene, we can see that the character is lit only by the environment. And this may be what you want. Uh, I decided to go for uh, a more even flat lighting setup that's more in line with your typical Toy Story setup. So to achieve this, I'm using a parallel light as my key light, and then I'm using a point light as my main fill light. Then I'm using an ambient light to kind of even out and bring down the overall lighting contrast. And then I've added an additional point light to give a slight boost to the key light. At this point, you could probably pretty much call it done. But the request was specific to subsurface scattering. And I already talked about it earlier. And since we can't really see the effects of subsurface scattering without turning on After Effects lights, now that we have them in the scene, let's turn on the subsurface scattering. So we'll go back into the element interface, select the face material, Click on this little SSS icon to jump immediately to the subsurface scattering material options and click enable. And then we'll exit out of element. And as soon as the render updates, you should be able to see a slight change to the character's face. It's a very subtle change and most people won't see it, but it does add that extra layer of professional gloss to the render. So unless you have one material that is applied to all of the skin, like I said before, you'll need to go into Element and update all of the materials to include the subsurface scattering. So that's it for this tutorial. And if you have any questions about the things that I covered or any requests for upcoming tutorials, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, 
Uh, what are you guys making with Element 3D? Uh, leave your links, or leave links in the comments below. I'd love to see the work that you're creating with Element 3D. And you can always contact me uh, via my website or any of my other social media channels. And if you guys enjoyed uh, this tutorial and you got value out of the information, definitely hit the like button. And also stay tuned for part two of this series where I break down how I used Element 3D to recreate the Toy Story 4 logo, as well as how I created this smoky background behind the character. And of course, I'll go over final compositing and uh, putting it all together for final render. So smash that subscribe button and hit the notification icon so that you can be alerted when new content is released on this channel. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.